Hello viewers and welcome once again to another VATSIM emergency. Today we will concern the go around procedure, which isn't really an emergency, but still a very important non-normal procedure that we all should know how to execute. A go around procedure is necessary in a various of different situations, such as an unstable approach, traffic on the runway, or a failure on the plane, all which can come very unexpected. It is therefore very important to be on the toes for every single approach we shoot. First of all, we will go through the different steps which we must take once we decide to go around. The very first thing we will do is to press TOGA, the takeoff go around feature, which lets the onboard computers know that we are going to execute a go around procedure and it will therefore configure the plane for it. At the same time, we will raise the nose to a 15 degrees nose up attitude and call for flaps 15. Lower flap settings as 25, 30 and 40 produces too much drag, whilst higher settings as 1, 5 and 10 doesn't produce enough lift at the low speeds which we have initially. Once a positive rate of climb is achieved, we will raise the gear. The reason why the gear stays down until then is to avoid hitting the ground with fuselage in the event that we go around just above the tarmac. In that event, we want the gear to absorb the impact and not the fuselage. After the gear lever has been set in the up position, we will advise it to see and verify that the correct missed approach altitude is set in the MCP. Above 400 feet above ground level, we will engage LNAV or heading select as appropriate. Meanwhile, as the speed increases, we will raise the flaps, initially at flaps 5, at the speed of re-rift plus 15 knots, and so forth at the appropriate speeds. Once flaps has been fully retracted and we are stable on the missed approach, will execute the after takeoff checklist, which completes the missed approach procedure. This was the different steps which must be taken during a missed approach, but the action which the pilot must take can differ from situation to situation. The go around procedure can be performed from three different landing configurations, whose procedures differ slightly from one another. The first configuration we can be in is with both autopilot A and B engaged in the auto land mode with glide slope and localizer captured and the auto throttle engaged. Second configuration is with either the autopilot A or B in command as well as the auto throttles engaged. Third and final configuration is from a hand flying perspective with either the auto throttles engaged or disengaged. During this episode the go around procedure will be discussed and demonstrated from all these three standpoints. So let's get right to it. Here we are getting all configured for the very first approach into Copenhagen, taking the runway 22 left today. Visibility is down to 2 kilometers, so indeed very poor, but let us just take a quick look on the chart for today's approach. So ILS frequency, heading and all that good stuff we have already programmed in both the captain and first officer's radio panel. Trains, precision level etc. we don't mind today, so let's jump straight down to the profile. We will capture the ILS at 3000 feet at 9.3 DME, final approach fix is at 1600 feet. Good. So jumping down to the minima, here we see that category 3 Bravo is available, which doesn't include a decision height, however most companies require at least 50 feet radio altitude, so that's what we're going to use. But what's really important for us today is of course the missed approach, which tells us to climb on a heading of 218 degrees to 500 feet. Or DME1 after the ILS station, Oscar X Ray Sierra, whichever is later. After both these requirements are achieved, turn left to 187 degrees, climbing to 3000 feet. Perfect. Okay, we are now on the base lake for runway 22 left, cleared down to 2000 feet, and just awaiting to be cleared onto the ILS. Heading 190, Right 190 cleared for the ILS 22 left for Thompson 619. 
Arming the localizer, um, it's already captured as indicated in the FMA. Arming the approach, allowing the auto pilot to follow the glide path once we intercept it. Okay, speed's coming in, so speed brakes can be lowered again. We'll just remain at flaps 5 configuration so we intercept the glide slope. So the missed approach was initially straight ahead until 400 feet and one DME outbound the ALS. So what we're going to do is just to grab the CDU, go to the fix page and type the ILS identifier, Pascal X-ray Sierra. So typing slash one, which will give us a circle around the ILS with a radius of one DME. As you see in the ND, the data line here has appeared. And we now know that we must cross the other side of this circle before we are allowed to turn. Until then we will fly on the runway heading of 218 degrees. Ok good, we should be set now. Minimums have been selected to 50 feet above the ground though. Glide path alive, slowly approaches. There we go, glide path have been captured, going gear down and flaps 15. Thompson 619 contact Capture Tower 419 Captain 1. Contacting Tower Thompson 619. Ok, so we'll just dial the speed down to flaps 15 metering speed and we'll contact the tower. Gasper Tower Thompson 619 checking in established on the ILS 22 left 5 miles 5. Thompson 619 Gasper Tower, good day, continue. Continue approach, Thompson 619. Alright, so as we discussed earlier, the very first step we make once we determine to go around is to press TOGA, the take off go around button. This will then cause the flight director to come alive and the thrust lever to automatically advance to what's known as the reduced go around thrust. The reduced go around thrust is roughly 10% below the green colored reference cursor at the N1 indicator. This setting should provide enough thrust to achieve a climb rate of 1 to 2,000 feet per minute, which in most cases should be sufficient. If additional thrust is needed, for example if terrain separation is doubtful, pressing the toga switch once again will further advance the thrust to the N1 limit. Because the autopilot is going to be in the auto line configuration, the plane will automatically pitch to follow the flight director and fly the runway heading until we tell it to do otherwise. So for this configuration, the only action we must take is to press TOGA, raise the flaps, select gear up and just monitor the plane that's following the desired path. Ok, let's make the final configurations for landing. Lights looks good, starters are in continuous. Go around altitude of 3000 feet, just setting that. Arming the speed brakes. And we'll activate the second autopilot to make use of the auto land feature. In the PFD, we now see glide path and localizer flashes. That's to cross check that both autopilots, which makes use of two different radios, both agree that we are on the ILS profile. Thompson 619 winds are 290 at 17 knots, gusting 30, runway 22 left. You are cleared to land. Cleared to land runway 22 left for Thompson 619. Ok, making the final landing checks, gear is down, flaps can now come 30, like that. Reducing the speed bug to VREF, which is 143. Adding 5 knots to that gives us the approach speed, which is 148 knots today. As for now, we can't see much outside other than the ocean right beneath us. But because we are in the autoland mode, this actually does not mind, as the plane will do everything for us even flare above the runway, as indicated here in the FMA. Ok, we are visual with the first bits of land now. 400 feet above the ground. And we are actually visual with the runway environment now, which means that we may continue through the minima, but we will of course perform a go around anyway. We'll just take her all the way down to decision height. Here it comes. Okay, go around. Toga. Flaps 15. Buster, right gear up. Thompson 619 going around. 
Thompson 619 and climb to 7000 feet and runway heading. 7000 feet, runway heading, Thompson 619. Flap to 5 and here comes 400 feet AGL, engaging heading select. Thompson 619, contact departure and 119.800. Contacting departure, Thompson 619. Clear the altitude was 7000 feet. 419, this one, the 10, thank you very much, Kelly, around to 7000. And we're coming through flap 1 speed, setting flaps up. Copenhagen departure, Thompson 619 will be on the go around, climbing 7000 on runway heading. Thompson 619, Roger, climb 3000 feet, and do you request ILF 30 or ILF 30? 3000 feet taking runway 2 left, Thompson 619. So, after a bit of communication and vectoring from A to Z, we are now in stable and calm flight, which allows us to perform the after takeoff checks. Gear can go off as well as the auto brakes. After takeoff checklist. Packs is in all tool pleats on engines. Flaps up and gear off, and light can come off as well. After takeoff checklist complete. And there we have it, the first go around procedure. A bit confusion with the altitude and such, but always remember to fly the plane first and then the checklist and all that good stuff can wait until the workload allows. But enough of that, let's move on to the next approach. So moving on to the next configuration, which is with either the autopilot A or B engaged along with the autotrolls. This being the landing configuration which is most commonly used. As Copenhagen air traffic controllers sadly had to leave us, we are now shooting an approach here at Dublin. This time around I won't bore you with the setup and configuration, as this is a pretty standard approach which I guess most of you are totally familiar with. For this approach, the only thing which has changed is that once we decide to go around and press toga, the autopilot will automatically disconnect and hand over the controls to us. It is therefore very important to be prepared to take the control and raise the nose gently and at the same time avoid to stall the wings. A good habit is therefore to wait for the engines to have spoiled up before pulling back on the stick. But enough of that chit chatting, let's see it in action. So here we are, stable on the ILS, landing checklist and clearance has been completed and are received, so the rest is up to us now. Once again, we'll take it all the way down to minimums, which is at 279 feet barometric for this approach. Visibility is once again very poor, so we cannot see much outside. But already now we see the first bits of the runway environment, we have the lights here. So, just one last time, once we have pressed toga, we'll just let the engine spoil up a bit, and then raise the nose to approximately 15 degrees nose up. Or we can just follow the flight director's commands, which should be quite similar. Approach is stable, we are a bit low, but that's okay. Here comes minimums. Go around, toga. I have control. Engine spell up, raising the nose. Flaps 15, bust the rig, gear up. Looking good, we can now silence the horn. And advise ATC. Thumbs down, 6 one on going around. Maintaining runway heading, Thompson 619. Engaging heading select, heading confirmed 280 degrees. Speed checked, flaps 5. Just nice and easy hand flying the flight director's commands right now. Coming through flaps 5 speed, setting flaps 1. Autopilot can come back on again to reduce the workload. You come 3000 feet. Thompson 619, turn right heading 360 degrees, climb to altitude 3000 feet. Right 360, climbing 3000 feet, Thompson 619. Setting the MCP speed to flat up marine speed or just a notch above. Okay, stable flight, so let's run through the after takeoff checks. Gear can come off, 
of the sacred checklist. Fleets are on engines, packs both and also, landing gear up and off, and flaps up no lag. After takeoff checklist complete. And there we have it, another successfully executed go around procedure. The third and final configuration, which we will be covering today, is the hand flown approach without the autostructs engaged. As you may have guessed, the flying perspective has not changed much compared to the previous approach. But because the autostructs are disengaged, the engine won't advance once you press toga. We are now responsible for the advancement of the thrust levers to the reduced go around thrust, which is for simplicity's sake defined as 85% N1. As per usual, we can always further advance the thrust to the N1 limit if needed. But apart from that, the procedure should be pretty familiar, so let's jump right to it. So once again, we are all set up on the ILS 28 into Dublin. Coming through 700 feet AGL, so let's disconnect the autopilot, let's silence that horn, all throttles can come off as well, my controls. If we take a look outside, there is still no sign of the runway, so for now we'll just follow the ILS. Ooh, a bit gusty here, runway is inside now. We are slightly high, so let's pitch down to get back on the glide path. Faintly retarding the throttles. And we are back on a stable approach. Here comes decision height. Go around toga, advancing on thrust levers, pitching up. Flaps 15. Plus the rate gear up. Pitching slightly down again to pick up some speed. Looking good, and we can advise tower. Thompson 619 are going around. Thompson 619 are Coming through flaps 15 speed, flaps 5 speed checked. 400 feet AGL, engaging heading select. Whoops, heading is not set correct, just change that to the wrong way heading, which is 280 degrees. Thompson 619 are left, heading 180 degrees, climbs altitude 3000 feet. Left 180 degrees, 3000 feet for Thompson 619. Good. Coming in on 3000 feet, we are indeed in a stable flight, so let's run through the after takeoff checks for the very last time. Gear can come to off, landing checklist, bleeds are in engines, both packs are in auto, gear up and off, flaps up no light, after takeoff checklist has been completed. And there we have it ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for hanging in there all the way to the end of this video. If you enjoyed and hopefully learned a thing or two along the way, do not forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll do my very best to answer. And of course, if you don't want to miss out on further videos, remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't seen my previous vets and videos, you can click on the screen now.